Hey guys, welcome to the fourth part of this sculpting a vampire little mini series tutorial thing that I'm currently doing with this guy. Um, when we last left it, uh, the face obviously looked a little bit different. I've taken a little bit of time and just made it look a little bit more how I personally wanted it to look. Um, also, I have created some um, leg. Um, leg armor here. All that is literally just um, a mask uh, like this. So I'll uh, do, do, do. I? just create a mask like this. Uh, thickness zero, extract, do a poly Z remesh. That's perform. And then literally um, just extruding these shapes out. Uh, extrude poly like that and in. So to get rid of the thickness in between. And basically I just went on and I sculpted to get these shapes here. So a way you can do it is to take the boot mesh into the center, mirror it together, so there's the left and right, and it's um, symmetrical, and then do it that way, that way you can create this in symmetry, and then afterwards you can just place it in the spot where it needs to be. Now, I did record that process, however, I lost the file several times, and I just got irritated, so I just did it off camera, which, that's pretty much it. There's nothing else I've really done. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So this time around, I am going to focus on the belt, as I said at the end of the last video, and also these van braces. I'm going to do the van braces first. I'm going to use the same process that I did with the legs, so you can probably see it a lot easier. So I'm just going to get right into it. I am going to... Um, separate this mesh from that one. Uh, I'm just going to split it. Go to the highest subdivision and you can split. Uh, split the parts like that. And now that is separate from that. I can delete that one. I don't need that. And this has its polygroups. And you can reconstruct the subdivision to get back to the lowest polygon how it were before. Now what I'm going to do with this is you can see there's a bunch of um, detail here. I'm going to try and simplify this as best I can. Um, I need to also bear in mind that the, there's going to be like a an opening in this side. So I'm going to sculpt in an opening and maybe like a, a little leather band going around and a buckle just so it looks like it works, you know, it's functional. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with this detail here. I'm going to try and simplify it as much as I can to make sure that it prints properly for purpose. So I'm just going to go and isolate the outside um, edge. I'm going to sculpt in where this line would be, the opening. Like that, and that's fine. And now I'm going to use my mask tool and I'm going to start creating some of these some of these shapes that you can see on here. So you can see that there is a, um, a border which is created using a mask. You see a border around here and there's like little, um, little shapes which are coming off. And I'll show you how easy it is to recreate these, these shapes with the mask. I want the mask to be pretty thick in terms of uh, well thickness. So I want, to, I want it out, out around the rim. I want it to show up when printed as well. So I'm going to just mask these. Make sure the center piece here isn't masked because I really should have separated this off and had it individually. Um, 
I should probably do that now actually. It's a lot it's not that difficult to do. Uh, so I'm just gonna delete this. Go back to what I had before, which is this. I'm going to just undo the history. I'm going to delete the lower or the higher, sorry. Delete the higher. I'm going to split this like that. Oh, I didn't delete this. Sub I didn't. I need to delete the um, the hidden mesh. So now this is just what we had before what we extracted and uh, thickened. So I've got that side there. That's got a little buckle thing. Not a buckle. A uh, dear. I'm not very good with words today. Uh, hide that. Hide this. So now it's got a a part in there. And I want it to be re relatively thick, so I can um, extrude it inwards. So I'm going to delete that hidden mesh. I go to my Z model at all, flip, and bring it in. Uh, make sure polygroup all is on, and bring it in like that, so there's no holes in between this mesh. Now I can go through and just pinch this, just to make it a little tighter. So I want it to look as if it does open, but also um, works. So I'm going to crease them polygroups that I've just created, smooth a few times. Yeah, for some reason it's not doing that, so I'm going to create the crease, smooth a few times. Delete the smooth and then just simply uh, uncrease and then smooth one more time to get a nice little finish. So now I've got this mesh here. I'm going to mask it, mask the edges like I said before. And this time obviously it's just this one piece and the rest is on the other side. See I could split this. Actually probably be a good idea to split this. But uh, yeah, I'm probably going to split it. So I'm going to delete the lower mesh, split this too. So subtool, split to parts. So now this bit is separate to this bit. And go back and reconstruct the subdivisions that I just had. Uh, isolate this piece here, and then I can start masking. So basically, it was just a long way, <laughs> long way around getting to the same point. So I'm going to use a mask lasso and I'm going to just mask around the outside first. Make sure my subdivisions are up to the top, so otherwise the mask will pixelate. And then I'm just going to mask around the rim like this. I want to try and get a consistent um, thickness throughout the whole rim. Not too fussed whether it is um, whether it is or not, but it's more of a preference than anything else. So now once you've got that, you can go and turn the mask lasso off and turn the mask pen on, and that way we can start creating our own little designs. So let's say we want to make it uh, probably ideal to try and make it symmetrical as possible, which again we're probably going about this the wrong way. Um, but that's fine, it's not, not a problem. Should probably take it into the center and mask it that way, but we're gonna do it freehand because not everything is symmetrical in, in the world, although the, I imagine these designs would be. So I'm gonna try and use these guides to basically drive the design. Something like this. Around like that. Around like that. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to try and get as close to it as we can. It's a nice little point there. Um, maybe we want some kind of rim going over there. I'm not going to copy it completely because I can't really see that all, that well. I think these little bars here would 
look quite nice. Uh, I'm gonna create like that there. Obviously, I've got to do it on the other side, and I'm starting to see that this isn't at the right place. Things start appearing when you make things relative to another. Mask, sharpen the edge. So, add a little circle there, you know, little circles, little bolts and gizmos and whatever. I can go through and obviously just add normal bolts afterwards. Um, now, let's say this, end it with a nice little spiral, so like so, a spiral on the other side. And this is the same, pretty much the same process that I did with the um, with the the leg guards. <clears throat> and then once I'm more or less happy with what I got, I can invert the mask, and then I can just pull it out, or I can push this design in. So I'm going to unhide everything first, so I can get a visualization of what I'm doing. So I'm going to pull out the rims and everything that was masked. I'm going to pull it out. So I'm going to drag the transpose and just pull that design out. Uh, it needs to kind of follow the plane. If it doesn't, you can just go through with the move tool, use alt and just pull out the bits that didn't necessarily come out properly. Like that. So now there's a relatively decent design on his arm. You can go through and fix any smaller bits if you so wish. But I think for this purpose and for miniatures and all the good stuff in between, this is fine. It's a bit wonky, but just to fix that with going down to the low sub tool so we're not morphing any of the actual detail itself go through and do that now it's fine looks fine print fine will look pretty good printed um i'm probably going to go back and do redo these chain mails and just make them a little bit chunkier because i've you know from a distance that's not going to appear this is going to appear i'd like to have um, basically, I want it to look better when it's, you know, on a, on a table. But uh, undecided about that decision yet. Uh, I'm going to have a look at what I need to do now. So we've got the arm. I'm gonna just mirror this and just flip it around. Actually, I'm not gonna re-sculpt the underside because nobody's gonna see it anyway. Uh, da -da. So just do that, flip it on the underside, make sure it's penetrating the mesh, like so, and I want it to be around here, so I need to pull this up. So I can go back to my lowest subdiv and start manually moving things around as well. I think the other one is slightly bigger. The underneath side, this is why it's not fitting this.
at this point, probably would have been faster to actually re sculpt it. I might have to do that. I'm losing the shape. So I've lost the definition there almost. I can try and pull it up and try and recover what I've lost. <clears throat> but it's just going to be a wonky, wonky thing. Let's just move that. Try and make it as straight as possible. So that kind of works. Like nobody's going to zoom right into it or look right into a uh, miniature and say, oh, that flunky. So that's fine. And it's a lot cleaner than most of the other stuff I do anyway. So, so just take your time and redefine things if you're one of the people that are really picky about certain details, but just once you've done with this, you can just merge it across. So delete the lowest, uh, delete the lowest subdivision, go to the highest. And once you've done that, you can just reconstruct on the other side. And it'll just bring back all the detail that you deleted and gives you back your subdivisions. It's important to have subdivisions in uh, models like this because I am going to pose it and I'm going to want to repose it in several different um, uh, poses. So I'm trying to keep as much detail at a low level as possible because I know I'm going to have to redo it or redo quite a lot of it. So like these straps will probably need to be redone. I'm going to sculpt one into a nice uh, level and then I'm going to redefine I'm going to have to replace everything afterwards. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is the belt, which was the intention of this part of the video, but we got a little bit sidetracked. Say we, I mean I. I got sidetracked. So if anybody has any questions or anything while you're watching this, um, just feel free to leave them in the comments at the bottom of the video and I shall get back to you. Um, maybe if you have any future video requests or if you need to know how to do a certain thing, if I know how to do it, I'll show you. Um, just gives me a way to put videos out and not 
feel like I'm plagiarizing others, which is probably one of the main concerns of mine because I don't like doing things that are already done. Uh, so, especially if they're already well done, you know, at least then I'm doing things that people have asked for and not just flooding my video library with things that don't necessarily need to be covered. All about that efficiency. Alright, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to isolate these uh, bits, put them in a folder, doesn't matter what the folder's called, merge them together, and then I'm going to mirror them across and just delete the folder. So now these are over here now as well. It just saves having to do it all one by one. Um, right, so let's get cracking on this belt. Now it looks as if there's a relief of a skull with wings, so I'm just going to sculpt that real quick. Uh, it's like a little demon skull or an imp skull but it's just a relief so not a lot of detail is required just the the main shapes that I can see which are the brow, head, cheekbones, nose, mouth which now saying that just, it's, it's just a normal head isn't it so uh, right so I want to probably reload this scene because it's lagging quite a bit actually. So I'm just going to reload this real quick. So save Vampire Lord 3. Oh. That's my uh, Discord. I might leave a link to that in a future video, I'm not sure. Depends whether I want people pop in or not. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to close ZBrush and reopen it. Default project. Basically doing this just gets rid of all the history and it's easier than going through and deleting the history. Right. So I'm going to reopen the file, go to texture, import, find your file, get your reference, put that on spotlight by clicking that button there, add the spotlight, Z to toggle in and out of spotlight, brush, samples, spotlight projection, now you can sculpt while that's over the top. You, uh, it's actually used for texturing. So I'll just do a quick, I'll show you what it's supposed to do. Uh, Spotlight is basically just used for uh, templates. The Spotlight projection, you can project things on top. So if I add RBG on, that will add Strad von Zarevich to a sphere. Yep. So if I moved it across, it's gonna do that there as well. It just overwrites the previous thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm just going to delete that and reopen another sphere. And I'm going to put spotlight projection back off. Uh, right, so. I'm going to just make that smaller, bring up my, oh, it's also shift Z to hide and show. I'm going to open this up on my other screen so I can see a little bit better.
Right, so we've got we've got the brow, we've got the skull. Hang on, Let me just zoom into my image. Right. <sighs> so we've got just an ordinary skull with horns. Brow. Let's make sure I'm dynamished. Brow. Da -da -da. Like that. And then once I've got the overall shape, I'm just going to redefine everything. That's perfectly fine to do at this stage. So it needs to be a little bit deeper. Again, it's only real leaf, so I'm just going to have to squish it down like that anyway. But it will look okay. So, bring that down. Add the plane. This and uh, use the spiral on the top of the uh, horns to give it a little bit of a bend. Bring it inwards. It's a little bit high. Head needs to be a bit rounder. Duplicate what I had there, not duplicate, um, subdivide what I had there to give myself a little bit more definition. I mean, it's only a relief, so I don't need to go in and add any depth really. I just want to re just define the shapes that are important. Uh, probably. Brush isn't working for some reason. Right. There's always a reason for things not working, but if there isn't, just go in and just resell brushes. But nine times out of ten, everything should shouldn't be working because you've got something turned off or your uh, samples is on when you've got a texture up or just other random stuff that doesn't really matter. So personally, I hate this, but hey ho, we'll just go with it. I might just redo this after I've finished uh, with the recording, which I did with a face. So I just want to add, make sure there's enough depth here to basically look as if it does go in. I mean, it's not like I say, it's only a relief on the belt, but you need to just make sure that everything kind of works at the level that it's supposed to be working at. I say level, scale. I say level, I mean scale. So it's an, I 
like a skeletal nose. Bring out these teeth a little bit. Make sure I redefine these areas. So you can probably just go in and add a little bit of depth here because there is depth there. And it'll bring out the teeth a little bit. Just in the corners and in between the teeth where you can. This is probably not necessary, but I also need it to look good in a render because that's my main selling focus when I do put this up for sale, which I will be. You can find it on my mini factory when this is done and Patreon. So if you like getting way too many files for $10 a month, you can. I do prefer my mini factory for things like sales because it's a bit more honest, I think. No idea why it's doing that. It was reading itself as having a mask for some reason. Subdivisions, redynamesh to make sure none of the textures are stretched, none of the texture on the model stretched. Again, this is just a quick job just to get the skeleton head face, demon face, and it's starting to look a lot better now. Now I've shaped it properly. And then I'm just going to throw this on the belt. So I'm happy with that as is. I'm just going to duplicate it so I can come back to it if I need to. Which I probably will. I'm going to throw that on the belt here. Make sure it's embedded. Uh, we're going to mask the back here, and we're just going to pull this, uh, pull this back. So now there's no excuse for it to not be embedded into the mesh, and we can pull this out using the move brush. Uh, we could probably just uh, do that, since it's only supposed to be a relief. I'm going to duplicate that. This needs to be mirrored again because for some reason it's uh, it's not. I'll just bring that in. And then obviously once we've done the, the sword and the belt and everything this will just overlay the top on top as it is in the concept, just overlay like that. And it just adds a, another form of depth to the character, like things are interchanged, like working within each other. And, you know, there's a, there's a relief on his belt, but you know, the belt's obviously interacting with that and going underneath it, just adds another level of detail, I guess. It doesn't look fantastic, but uh, we're gonna try and get as close to it as we can. So you need a buckle and then when the whole sculpt's done I'll do like a, a detailed damage pass and I think that'll make everything really pop. Um, right, so we'll just get onto the wings. Uh, same deal as before, really. Uh, so like this, go back to this. Uh, we can add a little... Uh, I 
actually a way we could do it. I don't usually do this this way, but we can say we, I mean I, um, get a uh, cube and we can look at where the wings are. So the wings would come out to about here. But I'm going to just bring that across. You can use something called the light box, a shadow box, sorry. And that will uh, probably be a lot easier than what I'm about to do. I'm just going to dynamesh this and I'm going to uh, clip curve. Do I clip curve? I'm just going to clip curve. I'm going to block in the uh, wings. So this is going to be like this, like this. like that and this should be a little bit that comes like this right, so we've got little block block out of wings and then we can go through and add uh, definition in like these bits here need to mask lasso Go through and do this real quick. Same as I pretty much did with the uh, arm and the leg, arm and the knee pads, the leg pads. This bit actually comes around to here, doesn't it? So it's supposed to work. Everything goes back to the, the main strut. It's fine. Uh, delete the end black back mask. So I'm just going to delete this. So that's not masking out, just the front. Probably should uh, be a bit more subdivided there. I'm going to redo this. Okay, I just need to bear in mind that this is probably not going to be seen anyway, so I shouldn't waste too much time on this. A lot of this will be um, covered up by the belt and it'll be too small to see. So just enough to get the overall shape. Uh, mask the back again. Uh, like that. And then I can just push this in. Like so. So I'm going to do something like this. So then it's your choice whether you wish to redefine any of these parts. So we can do this. Yeah, Redynamesh. It's a bit higher. So Redynamesh. We can start to add a little bit of depth here. working at a larger scale I'd obviously go through and do a bunch of uh, smaller details such as this uh, like that and obviously this would go in that'd go in that'd go in I meant in not out so in 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 uh, that'd go in so obviously it's connecting like that and put my other texture on my material
So you can imagine these being like little, little detailed wings. That again, when it comes to 3D printing and the scale we're working at, none of this is going to matter. So I'm just going to roughly add in a bunch of things to break up the silhouette. So like this, just these little little bits like that. Uh, probably need to scale, uh, grab these and just bring them back as well. So do, 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 do that. Make sure none of this is grabbed. No, it's not going to work. All right. Um, what do we do here? Should I just scale this back? No. So we need to grab this and make sure it comes back like that. Just push it back. And then we can use the mask rectangle, grab it, grab it about here, and here, and then pull that back. So there's no, uh, no issue when it comes to a thickness. And try and re remove all the holes as possible as we go. And you don't have to mess around later. All right, so I'm happy with that, relatively. See the other one's there. Put it in there. And as you can see from a distance, that's, that looks great. It genuinely, I I'm actually quite happy with how that looks at a smaller scale. But probably not going to be seen either way. Uh, it's, this does actually wrap around as well. So it's supposed to wrap around like this. And then these wings, I think the head's a little bit big. No, it's not. No, the belt's just too small. Like this. And then this wraps around. And she used the move brush just to bring it back through. Scale it. Scale the head down. Scale this down. Move these out slightly. So the court, the the metal parts, I assume they're metal. They're like little um, waist guards. Uh, I assume they are like battle worn or something like that. So they're gonna have like loads of scratches and dirt on them. You can just see Strad getting whacked by one from from a sword, like from. A low angle and they're there to um, deflect anything that he misses you know during combat so just mirror this like that. I'm just going to reposition this so we can see the left eye. And I've just spotted underneath the chin, didn't actually uh, scale across. So I'm just going to go back and mass un um, unmask this area here, down here. And then uh, back face mask on, mask the front, everything that I've missed. Okay, and just go back like this. So now there's no hole there, and I can flatten this if I want. <clears throat> All right, 
So that's, I think I'm happy with that. Yeah. So I'm going to hide these parts at the side. I can see everything wrapping around and working nicely. All this is going to be hidden, so I'm not too concerned about where it is underneath the model. So obviously I imagine things are just pressing down on it anyway. So I just remove the cape for now as well. Um, so that's that part of the belt done, I think. So now I'm going to work on uh, these bits. So I imagine these are, it's just a belt and obviously it's like an over belt. So this bit is like leather. So this bit's a level and, and some sort of like metal clasp or something somewhere underneath maybe, underneath the over belt. So I'm going to just add a little cube here like this again I don't think it's even going to be seen but it's a nice little detail that you can add in or that people think about to basically make things make sense so I'm going to put this uh, over the top like that I'm going to thin and then that down, bring that so it's closer to the edge of the belt and then I'm going to add two spheres and they're going to act as like studs, so clips or studs or like something like that and I can just do this, add here, add one just below and one above, so something like that, something simple and then obviously if a painter sees this, he's like, ooh, little studs. And you can paint them in and do whatever he wants. Which is, want people to have fun, don't we, with our uh, 3D prints. Let's um, increase. Nice. It's like a little thing we can just duplicate over, same with that, same with this, uh, we didn't even duplicate it, we just mirrored it, alright, so that's pretty much that part of the belt, so are we going to start thinking about his sword now, and his, uh, his belt that goes across for his sword, it's just a simple, uh, to make the uh, buckle, all I'm going to do, real simple, is create a folder, create two cubes, make this a boolean, put it into the same folder, so that's like an open cube, open cube. Um, I'm going to just add a little bit of depth to it, just make, just so it's not completely hollow. I use that same cube that I used to make hollow, make it even thinner, bring it out, ro uh, rotate it towards me, bring it up, push it up, and then just do something like this, the scale thing, um, and do that, and then bring it down. Bring it down like this, and then I can uh, group, fold it, whatever, and then I can uh, boolean this. Which 
some reason it is giving me these. The phone's about to die. Cool. <clears throat> so I'm just going to hide this mesh, actually. I'm not. Oh, bollocks. Didn't mean to do that. All right. So <laughs> going to do what I did before. Let's get a cube, bring it in. Uh, do that. Rotate. Bring that down. Just going to leave it like that. At least this one's smooth. Boolean. Merge. Uh, delete folder that I made the boolean with. Uh, delete that. And now I have a little buckle that I'm probably going to use everywhere on the model because why not? Uh, so this will go on top like this. Yeah, it's so it's so small. Nobody's gonna even care whether it's like a really high poly, uh, really detailed um, buckle or not. So I can make this belt thicker. Push it in. It's gonna look great on the render. And just that sort of thing there, and bam, you got a little buckle. Cool. I'm going to push this in there, just make sure it all folds and all does everything it's need, it needs to do. Push this because it's only supposed to be a relief, it's not supposed to be on top. <laughs> Duplicate that across, delete the uh, subdivision, uh, subtool, delete that one. Probably could bring these back in actually, and make them a little bit wider. So, do, 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 do. <sighs> coming up to an hour. Uh, I've got like forty-five, uh, fifty-five minutes coming up to. Uh, so I'm going to just quickly try and get as much done in not another 10 minutes then I'm gonna probably work on the cape and that's pretty much it I think that's all we'll have to do afterwards all oh, the pauldrons as well pauldrons will be made exactly the same as these so they'll be uh, extracted out and then they will be masked and pulled out and you know it's could probably just use one of these leg guards as a the pauldron actually. And that instant looks better than what we've already got, which is a bag of trash. So I could just add that there and then you know just another one just above it. Shape it so it's uh, not digging into his neck. Um Probably gonna do another one though, just so it folds around a little bit better. Uh, right, let's finish this. So we've got a bunch of creases. That's fine. Uh, subdivide, subdivide again, subdivide again. Now we can probably really play with this and you know, make it look really cool. So we're gonna like play with the edges. Uh, let me just get my uh, get my things. So I'm gonna go around all the edges and um, chamfer them off with the trim dynamic brush. 
I want to try not to make it look uh, too muddy. So I'm going to keep some edges, uh, scuff some out. Because ultimately this will, um, it's going to have like damage on it. So this is how I sculpt damage, like metal damage. Let's take off some of the edges. And then you can use a bunch of alphas, um, like cuts and scrapes and things such as that. Uh, there's also a VDM brush pack on ArtStation, which I use not frequently, honestly. Um, I think the detail in the brush pack is a little bit too sci-fi for the thing that I go for. That's a bit too, um, a bit too much of detail. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll open it up and I'll, I'll throw a few on here just to, just to get a feel. But I genuinely think that it's going to be useless for the most part. So I'm just going to open, gonna open the brush pack. Really itchy nose. Uh, metal damage. Uh, metal, 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 metal. I think it's in my other hard drive. Metal, 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 metal. Nightcap metal. Metal heat shields. Metal shields. I made a bunch of shields at one point. I was supposed to release them, didn't. I suppose giving people a, a pack to make their own miniatures with is kind of destroying my uh, business. <laughs> Now, NS Metal Damage VDM. Uh, I'll put a link to this um, in art station. It, yeah, it's in the description as well. Um, basically, if you want it, you can pick it up. Right, so this is the VDM brush pack. VDMs are vector displacement meshes. Wow, that actually is what they are. I blurred that out, okay. Uh, yeah, so, you know, you've got a range of different cuts and scratches. I mean, this one would work, that's nice. Might keep that one. Again, that one's nice. Um, probably a bit too much. That one's not very good as a metal, I don't think. Again, that looks like a scar of some kind. That looks like trash. That one looks like trash. Trash. It's literally is like gunshot wounds or something. Not wounds, but a lot of uh, a lot of trash here. That looks like an alien skin thing. Again, somebody's like ripped something apart. Bullets. Bullets. Weld. Weld. Good weld. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, I'm sure a lot of this has its purpose. I mean, you can just throw that on there and then just do a bunch of uh, these scratches like this. This will look really cool on like an ogre, an orc, something done. Bam. Mirror that across. Change up some of these textures. Cool. I mean, I want this to kind of to look a little bit cleaner than that, so I'm not going to use any of them. I don't think. Maybe, maybe one or two of the scratches. But I can probably just do this myself. Just whack in a uh, orb cracks. Just something like this. A few scratches like this. Nothing too, too uh, 
too bad or anything. And then once you've done a few scratches, you can go through and maybe uh, buff out the scratches with this. So to really add the abnormality of the, the surface itself, um, by the looks of it, it is like concave. Like I've, I've already made like an impression of the concave here. Uh, going to use some clay buildup to rough down some more of these edges and it adds like a little bit of noise as well which I'm okay with probably not gonna want that scrap that big deep gouge in there actually just gonna bring that out with the clay brush let's go over it with a damp standard and just got rid of it there go back with the these cuts here. And that's pretty much all I need, really. I mean, there's no point going nuts. A lot of these details aren't going to be seen, but again, it's for the render. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to mirror this across. Uh, delete lower, delete higher, mirror, delete that, and I'm just going to make a little bit of variation to this. So I'm to get rid of the scratches that are really defined and add something somewhere else. That's pretty much all I'm going to do. <clears throat> and then that'll look as if there's two different pieces and not one that's just been brought over. So you want to try and remove all the symmetry from the front mainly the sides more or less fine and the back's definitely fine so just adding a bit of bit of difference in the, the surface as well and that's pretty much it uh, for the belt obviously you need to add you don't need to you can leave it as it is uh, I'm going to add a little buckle, not a buckle, um, metal clasp casing thing. <coughs> Let it do the Sorry, I was talking to somebody. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna have these little metal bands here. Just make them look as if they go all the way through.
I'm just going to go through on the belt and just add a little bit of a uh, little bit of detail to make it look as obviously the belt's a bit slack and rough up some of the edges. Nothing too fancy, just enough to, again, render render reasons. So that's actually not supposed to be there. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's going to add a little rim to this. Go around like that. Adding like little bits to this belt just to make it look a little less flat. And then obviously I'm bringing this bit out so I can probably go and bring the relief out a little bit more just to make it so it isn't merged with anything I don't want it merged with. that's more or less the belt um, there's not really much more I'd do to this personally other than moving around some of these shapes to make sure it's not all embedded but that's pretty much it um, you don't really need much else I mean you could go as far as removing all this material in here to give the teeth more definition um, but again at this scale I think it'll all just merge anyway I should probably make it bigger, but I'm not going to do any of that. I'll add, I'll, I'll do that because then you can also see where the separation is. All right, so I'm going to leave this video here, and next time, ne in, well, in the next part, I'll be probably working on the cape, so that'll be fun. Uh, and the pauldrons. So, cave and pauldrons next. Thanks for watching. Leave any comments or suggestions, requests for future videos in the next in the in the comments, and I shall get on them if I want to, basically. All right. Bye.